Hey everybody, this is Nick from Android Headlines. Today, we're gonna to be doing an unboxing of the OnePlus 2. Now, we got our hands on the OnePlus 2 a couple of weeks ago, and we have a full hardware review because at that point, the hardware was final. However, the software was not in its final state yet. At this point, it doesn't seem like all of the software is quite yet in its final state, but we're still gonna take a look at what's inside the retail packaging of the OnePlus 2 as well as the box itself. So if you've ever seen the box of a OnePlus One, it actually came in a pretty cool, fairly fancy packaging, especially for the price. Um, in general, I would say the OnePlus One's packaging was really, really impressive. So far, this looks far more like an ordinary phone packaging that you might find with like a Samsung or an LG phone. So they've wrapped this thing completely in um, a little casing here. It's probably to protect the sandstone back as well, of course the screen up front. You don't want it to get scratched when you come out of the box. Underneath the phone is gonna be a set of, looks like manuals. I'll go ahead and open this up. Got your quick start guide here, user guide. We'll just flip through those real quick. So the quick start guide just has what the buttons are. I've got a couple of different languages in here telling you how to basically use the just, just the outside the buttons of the product. The user guide is gonna go more through maybe safety, safety declarations, um, says to save power and achieve longer battery life. That just looks like some generic stuff in here that you may never actually read. One of the more interesting things on the OnePlus One's package was the USB cable, which they seem to have kept the same design here, except of course, this one is a USB type C. Now, this is gonna be the first phone with a USB type C cable. Uh, it's a flat cabling. It feels very similar to the OnePlus Ones. If nothing, this feels much stronger. That's probably good because I know on my cable for the OnePlus One, the end of it is breaking off just a little bit. You get to take a look at the USB Type-C port. So if you look at the two, they have the really interesting looking, almost it's a reversible regular USB, so you can plug it into any side of a USB port. And then of course the USB Type-C cable. Now this is reversible in the port of the OnePlus Two. So you can put it in right on the bottom here. We'll take off the flap. So you can actually plug this in either way. So you plug it in this way, flip it over, plug it in that way. It's quite a nice thing. Now USB type C is supposed to have faster data transfer rates, but this is not a USB 3.0 cable. So when you're plugging it into your USB 3.0 port on a computer, it's not necessarily going to give you those faster data transfer rates. Uh, you got your standard power brick here. Just got a regular USB up top here. It doesn't look like anything special, but of course, the end of this is a little more special, so it looks like it will probably also, yep, plug in both sides, which is great because the OnePlus One's cable only has it on one side. It doesn't have it on both. And there have been more than a couple of times where I've plugged it in, woken up in the morning and realized, oh, I had the cable in backwards because it still fits in the port either way, but since there were not the prongs on both sides of the cable, it would only charge it one way. So now we're gonna take a look at the phone itself. We'll do our first impressions of it. Now, of course, again, we got the device a couple of weeks ago at the hands-on event, but this is the super final production. This is exactly what you're gonna get in the box when you order your own OnePlus 2. The sandstone back feels really, really nice. This feels like a, a very refined version of the sandstone back that came with the OnePlus One. Uh, it's definitely got that really nice gritty sandpaper feel. The device itself, as we said in the hardware review, feels really good in the hands. The metal sides are really, really nice. They're cool to the touch, of course, since it's metal. You have your little toggle switch here for priority mode. You've got your volume rocker and your power buttons here. Headset jack on the top, and of course that USB Type-C port on the bottom with the stereo speakers. Now remember, the home button on this is not an actual clicky button. It's a capacitive button, so that's your fingerprint scanner and your home button as well. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. Now while we're waiting for Oxygen OS 2.0 to load, we will also note that we've been sent an update for the phone. So more than likely this update is gonna ship with the OnePlus 2, but for now we're gonna to have to update our devices before we can actually start the review process. So as you can see, your standard Lollipop welcome screen. We'll go ahead and buzz through these things. There's no SIM card in there yet. I'll go ahead and do the setup and cut this out. 
All right, so unfortunately, it doesn't seem to want to connect to either my home Wi-Fi or my phone, just tethering off of it. So we're going to go ahead and skip the adding the Google account process for now. And maybe the little update that OnePlus sent me will fix this issue. But for now, this is a little irritating. Go ahead and do the first setup. We'll just put Nick because that's fine, whatever. As you'll notice that it has SwiftKey on here. So um, SwiftKey comes bundled with the OnePlus 2 as it did with the OnePlus 1 a couple months in. It's one of the few little partnerships that OnePlus has made with some other companies out there. We'll go ahead and enable Google services. Even though I don't have a Google account on here, it's fine. Okay, so as you see here, you'll be able to enable the software buttons or of course by default, the hardware buttons are here. So you have the home button, of course. On the right is the overview button, and on the left is the back button. Now, if you want to enable software buttons, you click that. It pops the little software buttons up on the screen, and you can always change that, of course, if you want to uh, go back to it. So I'm just going to use the hardware buttons for now. So one of the things that the OnePlus One debuted with, I think that was a first on any phone that I can think of, were a lot of off-screen gesture features. So we had double tap to wake from the LG G2 that was carried over to the G3 and the G4, and that got picked up by a lot of popular devices, including the OnePlus One. But there were also ones like you have open camera, you can draw an O on the screen while it's off to do that. Toggle flashlight, draw a V. Music control, you take both fingers and draw up or down. Now, most of these I never used because I would find that they would go off in my pocket. And in general, that wasn't exactly a great experience. So we'll go ahead and turn them on. We'll see how they work on this, see if they're a little bit better. Hopefully they are because I really liked using them. They just weren't very useful because they kept going off an accident. Now, of course, input method, you have your Swift key by default. There's also a Google keyboard. We'll go ahead and just enable Swift key since that comes on here. There's some new feature on here called shelf. We'll go ahead and enable that and just see what that looks like. Setup is complete. So now you have the home screen of the launcher for Oxygen OS 2.0. Now, as we showed in the software overview video, swiping to the left in the default launcher does not go to Google now. Instead, it goes to a new frequent page that shows frequent apps, frequent contacts, and other possibly customizable things. We'll have to go ahead and check more of that out for the review process. But for now, we'll go ahead and check and see what's installed on here. We were informed that the Amazon apps here are not normally going to be pre-installed. Those are supposed to only be for the Indian versions of the phone. So we'll, those will go ahead and be removed in the next little update that we have here. Of course, you have your audio tuner, and that's really about it besides the regular basic Google apps and SwiftKey, of course. So. You can see it's pretty bare bones essential. It doesn't take up a lot of space on the phone itself. And the nice thing is that means no bloat. So whatever you want to install is whatever you're going to install. We'll go ahead and jump into the settings menu and see what else might have been added in here since we last checked this out. So in general, this really feels super fast. It's a Snapdragon 810, so I would hope it would be fast. We'll have to see whether or not the final software gets the phone a little hotter than the pre-release software that we played with at the pre-release event a couple weeks ago. Checking out the gestures, it seems like a lot of other stuff in here is pretty stock lollipop. Of course, you have the fingerprint area where you can add your fingerprint. We can go ahead and we'll press it a couple of times. They want you to do it from different angles. So you want to just keep pressing it. See, I did it too fast. So it's pretty quick and it recognizes it pretty well. In fact, this process seems to be a lot quicker than the one that I set up at the pre-release event. It took uh, quite a few presses and of course from different angles. So you want to make sure you get all the different angles in there. That way you don't have to put it on the exact same way that you originally scanned it. Go ahead and change the fingerprint. We'll change it to pin. We'll just do a one, two, three, four because who really cares right now? And then we'll do enable fingerprint unlock. So now When I shut off the device, I should be able to put my fingerprint there. It automatically unlocks. Or if I want to do it this way, you could turn the screen on. You can swipe up, it'll ask you for that. Or you can just press the fingerprint and there you go, it'll read it. Now in my testing before, the fingerprint scanner, scanner was super accurate. It was really, really fast. It seems to be about the same here. Um, there are a couple of other fingerprint scanners on the market like this that aren't quite as fast or accurate. Hopefully this one holds up to that standard that we've been seeing. In the customization, of course, you can change the LED notification color. You have the system-wide dark mode that you can turn on. That always looks super nice, so we'll just leave that on. 
The phone itself feels really nice in the hand. I said that in the hardware review video, but I really feel like I need to state it again. This is a really, really nice feeling phone. For under $400, you wouldn't necessarily expect a build this premium. It feels no less premium than maybe a Galaxy S6 or any one of those other $700 phones that you would find on the market. It's really, really solid. It's got those metal edges around all sides. Of course, you have the trademark sandstone back here, and then you can buy the other backs if you want as well. OnePlus is going to be selling those five different backs. Again, check out our hardware review video for all the information on that. That'll be it for today. Thanks for watching, and of course, we'll have plenty of OnePlus 2 content coming to you soon.